thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'm James Allen, and I'm the head of early careers for Dentsu Aegis Network. Um, I'm just going to refer to it as Dan going forward. We call it Dan, um, so it's not some random person that we know. Um, <laughs> And we spent the last kind of 15 to 18 months creating what we call the code. So the code for us stands for creativity, opportunity, diversity, and empowerment. And it's essentially at the whole of our early careers program put into one kind of big uh, long-term strategy. So I'm going to take you through that in a bit more detail. Just to give you a bit of an overview of Dan, uh, most of you probably won't know us. We are a, um, the fourth largest advertising network globally. So we're made up of about 24 different brands. Each of those brands will have a different capability and will do something slightly different for our clients, but essentially it's to do with kind of marketing their products, their um, services, whatever it is that they need us to do. So it's a really diverse business. There's lots of different things going on. We're about 4,000 people in the UK, about 37,000 globally, so, um, so we're quite sizable. And we take on quite a lot of um, young people, so 16 to 24-year-olds. We hired probably about 100, just over 100 last year in London. So we do this quite regularly. But this is, a lot of what we've done is kind of based on different things around diversity, um, aligning it to our CSR programs and things like that. So Mark's uh, previous discussion couldn't have been better timed and I, hopefully we're gonna kind of agree with some of those things as well. So a quick agenda, I'm gonna talk about the why we've done anything, what we've done, how we've done it creating new internal opportunities, apprenticeships, work experience, things like that. Um, and then um, any takeaways and some questions as well, if you've got any. Have you ever stopped and thought, how did I get here? No doubt it's been an interesting journey and you've had some help along the way. Welcome to the Curd. Just to be yourself. Even if that's down to the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you act, just be yourself. Not to worry so much about what subjects I take at school and concentrate on subjects that I actually enjoy. The university isn't the be end all. There are other options out there. Drive, passion, enthusiasm are more important. And always remain inquisitive because we can only learn by asking. We all need help finding our place in the working world. And with all the options that surround us, making the right choice is harder than ever. That's why we're introducing The Code, a schools program which brings to life the power of our people and our network to make a positive impact in society and on the next generation of talent. The Code focuses on fostering creativity, identifying opportunities for future talent, encouraging diversity, and promoting empowerment to help build a digital economy that's better for everyone. Over the next three years, we hope to donate 50,000 hours back to schools, that 50% of our apprentices come through the code, and that we help shape thousands of bright digital futures. We need you. I want to support the code because there are millions of kids out there who are just like me, who didn't get guidance and advice when they're at school. I want them to understand their talent and their value in the world. I had a mentor when I was younger. I want to repair them by helping someone in the same position I was in. I think code's a great initiative for young people to come on board, learn about advertising and marketing. We all have two working days a year to make a difference to our community. So why not give a bit of your time to the code and help create a bright future for tomorrow's talent? I'll I'll code. Code. Why, Why don't, don't you? you? Be part of it. So that was our launch video that we created when we launched it last January. And it was really important that we created something to get our people interested. Um, so I could have probably spent five minutes trying to talk through everything, but that essentially is where it all started. It's how do we get back into schools and start to educate the future talent about our business, the roles, the opportunities that are there that, let's be honest, they have no idea about. So um, why we kind of, why it's important for us. As Mark said earlier, parents, teachers tend to be probably the biggest kind of influencers on young people. So you are what you're exposed to as a young person. You know what your parents do. You might know what your family do, some friends, some teachers. So you probably know traditional routes. Um, but you have no idea just the amount of roles, the amount of opportunities, the amount of businesses, small businesses out there that have some really interesting opportunities. So I think as a young person, you, somebody needs to help you. Um, 
and as I say, students self-select out of our industries be through ignorance, and that's not ignorance that they're just not interested. They just have no idea where to go or how to get any of this information. So I think as an industry, we have an obligation to pay it forward in that respect. Our industry, from an advertising perspective, has huge diversity issues, um, general stereotypes of white middle-class males running um, advertising campaigns aimed at young people or females. It's just the wrong way. That, uh, so with kind of one of the early parts of the way we address it is through our early careers program as well and through the code. Um, interestingly, we have hired, so you know, we hire between 60 and 80 young people into assistant level roles, which are generally our early careers program. 95% of those are graduates and have been. That's not because we have any entry requirements, that's just who come and find us and where we advertise. So we've got to change that and start to shift away if we're going to change any of the diversity. And there was a really interesting stat from the World Economic Forum that said 65% of young people in education today will go into a job that doesn't yet exist. So what hope do teachers and education have generally in it helping prepare young people for this? Um, so again, industries have this obligation to help education and young people with it. And there's research that suggests that if students don't have at least four interactions during their school um, careers with an employer, they're more likely to end up neat. Um, as Mark said earlier, so not in education, employment or training. So you don't have to go in and just go, go in once. That's, that's not solving a problem. It has to be a regular interaction. So what have we created? Well, you saw in the video that we are looking to build, um, to give back 50,000 hours back to schools through our people. So we want our people to go into workshops, go into schools, to talk to young people about what we're actually doing, why, why it's interesting, why they can do it. There's a massive... Uh, perception issue for an advertising industry, people think they have to be creative to work in it, but there is so much data that underpins it. We still have accountant teams, finance, HR, IT, we have all of those, so you don't have to be creative to work in advertising. But I think there's these stereotypes out there that will stop people even being interested. We want to influence thousands of digital futures, and as, as I said in the video, we want to take 50% of all the apprentices we hire out of the schools that we engage with. So what we've done in the first year, we've built school relationships. Um, so we have, at the moment, 13 partner schools across the country. Um, for those, we're going in and doing regular workshops for year 9, 10, and 12. Um, we're working with a provider to help us get into those schools, and I'll touch on that in a bit more detail. We've created a new apprenticeship program, so if we're going to engage with these new kind of pools of talent, we've got to create opportunities for them to come into the business. Um, we're reshaping our work experience programs, so actually if you've got 24 brands doing 24 different things, there's no real value in coming in and spending a week in one brand because it's not really understanding the industry as a whole, so it's a much more consistent view that we're looking at. And then we're also going to be running Find Your Future Days, which are quarterly for people just to come in, we'll open our doors and they can just get a bit of a sense of what we're like as well. It's kind of how we've done it. So. It first came out of a really random conversation about we need to do a bit more with schools. Um, kind of talking around some of our CSR stuff, we used to work with the Princess Trust, but we were, t we were kind of paying to work with the Princess Trust on their agenda, and it wasn't really generating anything back for us. So we've aligned it perfectly to our CSR program. So as it said, we have two working days that we give every employee a year to go and work on anything they want, volunteering, however they want to do it. So our ask is that our people get involved in the code and they give one of those days back to the code and go and work in the school, go and do a workshop, take somebody on work experience, become a mentor. And this seemed to kind of really work for us. Um, so that, that kind of gave us two different issues that we're trying to tackle, diversity, CSR, bringing in young people. And our business is quite young, so our average age is about 27. So people, as Mark said, people really care about this CSR piece and doing the right thing, and it's really paid off for us. Um, our biggest challenge was we kind of knew what we wanted to do, but we didn't know how. And how do you get into schools? There's so much red tape, bureaucracy, you don't really know where to start. So we kind of spoke to a couple of different people and found a couple of providers that could help. And essentially the providers are there for us to get into schools. They do all of our school engagement for us. They go and talk to the schools, they get them interested in the programs that we want to run. Um, and they take all of that away from it. So what we can focus on is actually creating some content that we know is good, that's relevant for our business and getting our people engaged in the right way. 
So we chose a, um, a company called My Kind of Future, and the reason we chose them was they are specialists um, in bridging the gap between school and, um, and business. So they have a network of over 5,000 schools across the country, um, and it gave us the, the confidence that we could go and talk to any of those schools if we needed to. What we did give them as a challenge, so we wanted to find schools that had a high percentage of BAME representation. Um, sorry for using the BAME word, I know it was uh, talked about earlier. Um, that we also wanted a high percentage of free school meals in those schools, so areas of low social or lower social mobility. Um, and we needed access to years 12 and 13. So if we're going to do all of this school engagement, there's not that much value in them going off at year 11 and then us not continuing it in years 12 and 13. So we want to roll off people from workshops, from, through apprenticeship workshops, to actually become apprentices in our business. So we're saying you can be an apprentice in Dan, at Dan um, at the age of 18. So for us, this is a four-year plan. So we can start to engage with students in year nine. We can continually do it in years 10, not necessarily year 11, because schools don't really like that. Um, and then years 12 and 13, we can go back in as well. Um, and then we also chose it based on office locations. So we are, we've got offices in Manchester, Leeds, Newcastle, Edinburgh, um, Stoke and London, and we have to have them local enough for our people to actually be able to travel to, um, which is sometimes proven difficult, as Lauren, our schools manager, will tell you. Um, and then what we actually did, we started to talk internally um, to all of our CEOs and MDs. So of those 20 odd brands, we went and spoke to all of the leaders and said, this is what we want to do. We're spending this much money through the Prince's Trust. You're not seeing any value for that, but you're paying into it. So pay into a pot that we will then create a program that is fit for Dan, that creates future talent for us, um, and that will get your people excited by a CSR program that will work. And pretty much universally, every one of them said, great, totally agree with that. It's the right thing to do. They are all on board. A couple of them were apprentices themselves and have worked, them way, worked their way up, um, or their brothers were, or you know, they've got affiliations with a school. So, and I think as a parent, not a parent myself, but for those in the room, I'm sure you really care about the schools that your children go to are doing the right thing. So it's a really easy sell for us. So what we asked for, if, they're gonna, if they were bought in, we asked for between five and 10,000 pounds, depending on the size of their agencies. So some agencies are 20 people, some are 400. So 10,000 pounds for them isn't a huge amount of money. And the ones that didn't necessarily have that money or, or available, what we essentially asked for them is to give their time and create something for us. So that video was created by one of our internal brands instead of actually contributing towards it um, as well. So that's kind of how we did it. But then the what is more around, so last March, the first interactions that we had were the 40 workshops. So we went into 40 different schools in March in a month, and we had three people per workshop go into, into those schools. So we had just under 120 people of our business go in and deliver a workshop to year nines. And year nines is probably slightly too young for what we were initially talking about, but actually it was the only people we could get access to at that time. And to build a long-term view, we thought there was no, no kind of bad thing. So it was a really basic overview. We set them a brief from Adidas, who are one of our clients, and said, Adidas want to relaunch their app. How would you do it? And we taught them through a few different things around channels, your audience, and things like that. And they went down really, really well. And some schools chose the classes that they wanted to be part of. Others just opened it up to everybody as well. So they were really successful. We got great feedback from them. What we then did from those first 40 schools, we went out to those schools, got feedback from them. Did it work? Did you enjoy it? What are your thoughts? Would you be interested in building a formal partnership? We had quite a few came back, that came back, and then that's when my kind of future went and looked at the BAME representation, the free school meal percentage, um, and all of those kind of things. And we then chose the, the 13 that really aligned to what we were looking to do and said, those, you'll be our partners for the next year. And as a partner, what we're essentially offering is that we've done that year nine workshop, but we'll come back in and do two more workshops for years 10 and 12. We'll open it up to a program called Rise Up, which is a digital challenge that we'll set you can get work experience. You, we'll come in and do any kind of um, workshops that you want us to do. We'll visit for careers fairs. We've said we'd love to come in and talk at parents' evenings because, like Mark said, we want to get in front of parents, but that's a slightly harder challenge. But in return, they need to help talk about density to their students as and when they need to as well. 
And then, as I say, so, so the Rise Up Challenge, the national challenge, was something that we then launched in September. Um, it's a national campaign to create a campaign, uh, to create their own advertising campaign. So we will set them a brief, and then they have eight weeks to go and respond to it. But for the schools that we work with, we went in and sent our people in, and they delivered workshops on what actually makes a good campaign. So we took them for, through four key components of what makes a good campaign, through creative ideas, through data, through your audience, and the right channels. And it gave them a bit of context as to what we were looking for. Um, I'll talk through in a bit more detail, but I've got another video that I can show that will hopefully give a bit more context that we had, again, created from one of our internal brands. So just bear with me. The first thing I see is the glow of my phone. Through bleary eyes, I swipe, I tap, and scroll. Earbuds in, eyes down. At the back of the bus. For every like and share, a gratifying buzz. Another lecture in another assembly saying overuse of internet's an addiction. It's no good for me. All they see is Snapchat streaking. The Instagram filters. What's up in a meme in. But take a second. Go beyond the cliches. You'll see that our generation has the power to change the world in a million ways. See, we're creators. We can code, share ideas, launch movements, shoot a sick video. I bet it gets bare views in. Make an app or an innovation. Write a campaign. That sparks a revolution, paves the way, lights the flame. Because this world is a work in progress. You can shake the etch a sketch with the skills that you possess. So rise up and repeat this phrase. Our generation has, has the, the power, power to change, change the world in a million ways. Hopefully that gives a bit more context to it. We created that video to be totally different to anything else that we put out there because it's not necessarily aimed at the same audience. So it's aimed at young people at schools. You can't have people like me sitting in a room saying this is what the script should look like, this is what we need to tell them. So we got a, uh, a few young people in um, who were training to learn spoken word um, and they had a, a session in one of our agencies that we hosted um, and they created the script for us and then we got those some of those people performed in the video as well So it's a really nice message that we get young people to create a video to inspire young people and hopefully empower them And the message that hopefully came through is around empowerment that these guys have ideas that we want to listen to And that don't just sit and kind of assume that because you're young you haven't got anything to add because that's totally the opposite So we had 60 entries overall um, <laughs> And we shortlisted the best 13. Uh, essentially, the brief was do something to change your local environment for the better around poverty, gender equality, um, better education, and mental health. And it was really, it was amazing. Looking at some of the responses, we were like, totally overwhelmed by it. So for the 13 that we had in, we invited them to Channel 4 for the day. So Channel 4 are one of our media partners. Um, they got involved, and we hosted it in their theatre. We got them all down, some came as far from Cornwall, from Yorkshire, came down for it and up for it for the day. And they had to present their idea on stage to the whole room, including a judge, uh, judging panel from industry who had kind of the, the DNI lead for Channel 4, um, had our HR director, had a um, couple of people from trade publications as well. Um, and it was the first time most of them had done something like this, but it was an overwhelming success. Uh, does work. <laughs> um, and this was the winning one. So Harris Academy in London came up. You can see them on the left there presenting. Um, and their campaign was around mental health in young men. And it was around I'm not okay. Um, and that was the poster they created, which I'm sure some of you agree could probably just go out tomorrow as it is and probably be quite powerful. Um, and it was really important. And there were some great stories in there. We had one girl who had... Um, she, she'd never presented in her life. She had uh, massive anxiety and she got on stage in front of 100 people and spoke for the first time. So there's some really nice, powerful stories in there. What we're going to do with these guys is these guys have won work experience with us. Um, they all really won a few kind of Amazon Echoes and some goodies to go along the way. But we're actually working with one of our other clients is Calm. 
and we're talking to Calm at the moment about can we get these guys to work on Calm's next advertising campaign because they created something that's totally in alignment for them. And even if they can't, can they spend a couple of days just talking to them about it as well? So, um, and we're also going to look to see if we can get this ad brought to life and get it on billboards across the, uh, across the country as well, which is, again, for young people to have that on a CV is, is pretty amazing. So once you've done all of that, the view is that's great, but what do you do with it? So we didn't have apprenticeship programs before. We hired the odd apprentice here and there. And as I said to a couple of people earlier, hiring one or two doesn't really make a difference. And actually, it isolates them because they're the only apprentice in that team and managers might not know what they're doing. So we thought it was really important on the back of the levy and on the back of all the work we've been doing with schools to create cohorts of apprentices. So last September, we hired our first 20. Um, we're going to be hiring 20 every six months to bring in. Um, and it was really important for us to get them to see the whole of the network. So not just one brand. You don't just come into one brand and stay there. So we spent the first two weeks properly kind of onboarding them and getting to th them to see the whole power of the network. Um, and that middle picture at the bottom is all of our 20 apprentices on the first day. They met with our chief exec, our MD, our HR director, just to get a bit of buy-in as well. Um, and the reason we wanted to do the cohort was that they could offer support for each other. You know, we can help them, but actually this peer-to-peer kind of support ne network seems to be really important and really valuable. And it also means they can help each other out if they're sitting in different brands. So one can talk about media buying, another can talk about data, someone else can talk about creative, and they can kind of pull it together. Um, and what was really good for us is, you know, we talk about the diversity side of it. When we hired 95% of all of our entry-level talent who are graduates, this was the first pool of talent we'd ever hired where there was no graduates in, in it. So it's totally shifted the way we do it almost overnight with a pool of people. Um, I mean, there's been some learning curves along the way. I can see Leon nodding as who, who runs the apprenticeship program. Um, there's things that we need to go back and adjust on the onboarding. Two weeks was too long. One week would have been far better to just get them kind of more engaged um, and not lose kind of traction on it. We probably were a bit too nice, too much free pizza, too many nice meeting rooms. So they probably weren't necessarily expecting on day one when they were thrown into their actual jobs. Um, so there's some learning stuff there that we can take out of it, but it's really important for us. Um, and we hired the, all of them through Creative Pioneers too, who are our apprenticeship provider. So they help source through 500 applications um, as well. Uh, and as I say, we want to formalize a work experience program one of the challenges we have with work experience, probably like every business in here, is it's based on who you know. So my client's got a son who wants to come in, the CEO plays golf with somebody whose son wants to get some work experience. That's great, but if I'm honest, it doesn't add value to the people who actually need this. So we're in the process of formalizing it, and I've got a proposal to take to our exec, which will be based on for every referral we take, we have to take a non-referral to make sure we balance it out um, and give them a proper, consistent approach to, to what we're doing that isn't going to take our managers hours. Um, we can actually help with that as an HR team as well. And then, as I say, our quarterly Find Your Future Days. I stole Find Your Future from the Rise Up Awards. Somebody got on stage and said that we should be doing something around Find Your Future, um, and I kind of stole it. <laughs> I, I will go back at some point and tell them. Um, so that's around creating internal opportunities. There will be more uh, that comes up over the next year or two. We will also have, although we've got 13 partner schools, we are also totally open to any parent who wants to take any of the content into their children's school or any governor or anybody who is aligned to their old school who gets asked to do something. We have this ready-made um, pool of content that they can just take and present into their own schools as well. So while we are formalizing 13 partnerships, when you actually look at it, we probably went into over 60 or 70 different schools last year. And this year, we're already starting the year nine workshops and we've gone from 40 to 60 as well. So we just want to keep scaling it up. Um, and then the next slide will be a wrap-up video. So this is the year one with some stats and everything in it as well.
So that, yeah, that was hopefully just a bit of an overview of, on, on the success that we've had. And we created that to send internally so that MD CEOs could actually see what they'd invested in and, and the value of it. Um, one of the last kind of slides from our perspective is what we've, what we've tried to change and do slightly differently is around making the assessment approach more fun. So like Mark says, how many people are now engaging with applications and wanting to do things on their phone? Um, so we are still doing kind of assessments but we are making, we've gone down the route of using mobile games to do it. So we do verbal reasoning, numerical reasoning, um, critical reasoning, but we send them a link so they can play it on their phone. So if you think of, you know, some of these young people who, who are applying probably haven't necessarily gone through their academic life excelling, but that doesn't mean that they're not interested in our, in our opportunities and we don't want them. So we wanted to do this in a way that normalised their everyday approach and created something more interesting as well. So we do, we send this out for every application we get. We send out Cosmic Cadet and Yellow Hook Reef, who we use with Arctic Shores, who are our partner. Um, and the Yellow Hook Reef, the second one, is all around those three types of assessment. And then the first one is around a bit of a personality profiling. So it's testing con cognition, thinking style. There's also things in there around uh, adversity to risk, resilience as well. But it's really fun when you play them. It's a bit like Angry Birds. So you, I found myself on a couple of commutes into work just constantly like trialling them out, and they're great fun. And then the, the last thing that we're trialling is, as part of our assessment centre, is... Um, we are starting to run um, in the afternoon. We take all of our candidates over to ClueQuest, who are a live escape room company, and we get to sit in mission control and we watch how they actually interact with each other, which is great from a behavioural perspective. So you can really start to see how they engage. You can start to see, are they a natural leader? Are they a good communicator? Maybe they're a little bit more reserved, but they're a problem solver. So assessment centres tend to favour extroverts and not introverts. Well, this can help give us a bit of context on some of that but as importantly what we want them to do is even if they come away and they haven't got a job that's a great experience and they can go home and they can go and tell people that they've done an escape room as part of that process which is just a kind of great uh, all-round piece for us and then key takeaways from us so of kind of thinking back about why this has been really successful so we had over 400 people sign up in the first week to take part We've delivered over 7,000 hours. We've got in front of 6,000 students. We've got some great feedback. I think these, these are the kind of the key reasons why. So because we aligned it to multiple different internal goals, this wasn't just a recruitment process and a recruitment issue. This is aligning it to a CSR piece that the business care about. And actually out of the staff survey responses that we get annually, our people were telling the business that the CSR stuff was a bit pointless, that yeah, we did it, but it didn't really add any value across things. Whereas this ties it in really nicely with future um, kind of issues that we want to resolve. Um, next part was finding an, an external partner that was really kind of aligned to what we did. And I think any advice would be, be clear on what you want from them. For us, we need them to get into schools, but we can create everything else. We're a creative business. We don't need them to create our kind of work for us. Um, and then the internal launch, we spoke to as many people about it as possible. We went to huddles, uh, we got leadership notes sent out. Uh, Lauren, Leon and a couple of other people in our team just spoke at every opportunity about it, which was great. And the videos made a real impact as well. Building long-term pathways is fine if you do engagement, but it can't be one-off. It has to be regular, it has to be more often, and it has to give them an opportunity into, um, to do something and come in and see, that, see our business. We can't get them excited, leave, and then you have no way to contact us. So you've got to build longer-term things. And then the creating apprenticeships piece as well. Um, other people have spoken through that in more detail, but if you want more information, then come and find me. That is it, in a nutshell. Any thank, questions? Thank you very much.